Assalamu alaikum. Invite endless blessings into your home. Please subscribe now. The button below. Sayyidi, how to deal with a sudden anxiety attack even when someone is reciting their awrad, especially when we don't know why so anxious? Yeah, anytime we're, we're doing our spiritual practices, Allah Shaitanul Bismillah ar-Rahman ar-Rahim, that you're dealing with energy and when there's energy around and you're not familiar with something, your soul sees but you don't. So if your soul is, is sensing something from an energy while you're meditating and practicing or your soul senses something, a difficulty, an issue, something happening. Remember the body is in a state of heedlessness and the soul is hyper alert. That's why when the practices are too heavy and too often or too much then the soul can become hyper alert and the physicality is not ready for that. So then it depends on, on what issues are happening, when they're happening. If you're doing the awrad and you're feeling the anxiety coming or you're not doing the awrad and you're feeling… So everything has to be very specific to your condition then we can prescribe inshaAllah based on what you're describing as far as is it during your meditation, is it during the practices, is it because of a, too many practices and energies and these are all things that you can email. So you can email the help me at Nur Muhammad, describe what's happening and then we try our best to, to address that inshaAllah. Mm. Uh, Sayyidi, can you please give us guidance about what solar lunar eclipses are and how they affect us spiritually and how to protect ourselves during eclipses? Yeah, that uh, best to know that Prophet just had concerns during the eclipse and that they would enter into the salah and stay in sujood while the eclipse is taking place. And there's an importance with the sun, the moon and the earth and everything that happens is a sign and a sharat. And generally these are a warning signs of difficulties that come to earth and that are heading on to earth. And we know that we are in difficult times already. Best not to look at those because of the energy that comes and whatever difficulty is being and the guidance of that difficulty that or sign of that difficulty that coming to earth, don't go out staring at it. It may have a negative effect upon insan and an unpleasant energy for those who are sensitive and, and subtle towards energy. Best to avoid those situations of looking at that and that to pray that, Ya Rabbi if anything is of a difficulty coming that grant us a najat and a salvation through it, a protection through every type of difficulty. We're living in a difficult time in which these pandemics and difficulties will keep coming. That when one wave goes another wave comes, so to live a life of preparedness. When things become better it's not a time to become heedless but to go out and get the supplies that you couldn't get before. Make sure your house has disinfectants, your house has all the, the chemicals, all the, the necessary supplies that you need so that you can restock and at least be prepared for an event of difficulty. That one came and many people were caught off guard. At least now we live a life of preparedness to have whatever is necessary for our survival to the best of our ability that we should keep these things within the home. And for times of pestilence and other types of difficulty that enter into the earth that have uh, whatever you can get of things that would stop the pestilence, the chemicals that you need for, for disinfectants and all of these types of things to live a life of preparedness to show Allah Ya Rabbi we understand, we understood the signs and we try to live our best to be prepared inshaAllah. <coughs> <coughs>
Yes, Saidi, what other ways can one support if one is a stay-at-home mom without income? That alhamdulillah through your prayers and du'a and to be of service. If there is time that is available and there is a service that you can provide then alhamdulillah you email the help me at uh, Nur Muhammad on uh, what your abilities or your God-given gift. We have so many people now uh, translating and trying to be of service to translate in their native tongues, in Spanish and French, we need more Spanish, we need more French, we need uh, every language possible. Bengali, we need uh, Hindi, we need uh, Russian. So alhamdulillah there's always a way to be of service and, and inshaAllah open a way in our hearts in, in which to to make us to be of service to Prophet inshaAllah, Sayyidina Muhammad inshaAllah. Someone was uh, asking clarification, um, Sayyidi this is the month of binary codes, mm. what does that mean? <laughs> that's clarification or that's a whole talk? <laughs> Just trying yeah. to understand what, what is Yeah, the... there's articles on Shawwal so please download the app and click on the articles because in this, in this type of form I can only talk for a few minutes so I don't want to pass that by. It's not trying to be rude but we have all those articles on Shawwal and the website is, is all tagged. Every article on the website on nurmuhammad.com, that's why help me at nurmuhammad.com. Nur Muhammad has an immense resource, thousands and thousands of pages of articles and mainly tagged pretty good. So you can go into the search on the website and type in Shawwal. And you should pick up the videos, the, the articles and whatever possible. Shawwal is the binary code and it's a reality of on and off that Ramadan annihilates the servant to be off because the, the, the blessings of fasting. And now the ten represents one and zero that you're now being taken to the presence of the one. Our life is about being on and off. As much as you're going to be off in dunya, you're going to reach towards the one of Malakut. As much as we're going to be on in dunya where it's all about our dunya life, as much as we are distant from the Malakut. So this code is continuously flowing. When we drop down and it's continuous, when we're dropping down in our dunya reality and being crushed and going through testing, your Malakut is rising. And you should be able at that time to meditate and feel that energy. And that's why khalwa and chilta and the, the times in which they were ordered into seclusions was to drop down and to reach that state of death. They're cut off from everything and they meditate and contemplate to reach towards that reality and a state of like almost dying coming into the khalwa through testing and difficulty and worshipness and they begin to lower that energy of dunya and mulk and Allah begin to open for them their reality of malakut and that one begin to appear for them on the horizon of their heart in which to see what Allah wants them to see inshaAllah. Sayyidi, is it possible to feel heartbeats during the silent heart zikr on our right side, not left side? Also is seeing a dark dot while meditation or hearing a whistle in our left ear mean something? A dark dot? A dark dot. Yeah, I mean anything can mean anything but do you focus on it? No. So that's why you're trying to keep your focus. So imagine that we're on a bus towards the presence of Sayyidina Muhammad and on this bus you keep looking at the view and the scenery. Instead of doing the salawats, the practices that you're preparing yourself now to enter into the presence of that reality. So the whole process of distraction is to distract the servant from their target. So those horizons and visions on the side and left and front, they're not as, they're not as significant as negating oneself. Ya Rabbi, I don't need to see anything, I'm nothing, I'm nothing. I'm closed my eyes and I want to be in Madinat Munawwara and let me to reach to oceans of power. Now you see this coming and that can be a distraction. 
you can see a vision of this coming and these are all distractions that tell and negate yourself to be nothing, I'm nothing, I'm nothing. And I'm not here for the visions Ya Rabbi, I want to reach towards this ocean of power. I want to be in the presence of Sayyidina Muhammad and I want to do my salawats and feel the energy of my salawats. Because if you allow the imaginary world of visualizing and those whom have a very strong imagination can all of a sudden lose themselves in an imaginal world. You know I saw the fairies coming, I saw these things are floating, I saw all these stars were shooting. And then instead of your focus and your zikr and where you're trying to achieve and to reach your destination, you become distracted. And that's why Naqshbandiya veils the servant until they reach their destination. And the destination is not the heavenly kingdom but the destination is into the inner core of their bad character. Naqshbandiya, the minute they join and, and partake in the Naqshbandiya way, Shaykh Abdullah Faiz al Daghestani's promise is that, I will lift that servant immediately to my maqam. Where Allah dressed me from, I will dress that servant. And their journey is not into the heavens but into their bad character. And until they go deep into their bad character, resolve their bad characteristics, take away all their bad desires, then that vision will become clearer and clearer because you already achieved those stations within the heaven. So it is moving to the heavens but the most powerful way is to move inside yourself. So you rid the veils of your, your humanity which are the thickest veils of bad character. So as you're burning through them and the shaykh is describing this interaction with the shaykh is so that to burn your characteristics most of which you didn't know existed within you because once you start to to deal with the shaykh you start to debate and argue and you didn't like this advice, you thought the advice was something else and my mom advised this and my, my dad advised this and my brother advised that and all of those will bring out those characteristics of the, the most difficult char characteristics and these are hijab al-bashariya, the, uh, the veils of humanity and the thick bad characteristics that have to be drilled through inshaAllah. Now Sayyidi on the spiritual path, how many hours of sleep a day on average does one sleep when someone has become a murid from a muhibbeen? Yeah, the rule that Mawlana Shaykh teaches is eight hours, get your good eight hours of sleep and keep struggling against oneself and eight hours of worshipness and eight hours of work and your eight hours of sleep. Your worshipness includes your salah and the time that you spend with your family and loved ones so that they can feel the presence of, of that person and that reality. And as they progress and progress it's not a matter of you sleeping less, it's the energy will become so intense it's difficult to sleep. It's not a matter of trying to keep yourself awake and then have coffee and, and, and you know fall and stumble around the house. The energy is coming so heavy onto that servant that they just can't sleep. And that's then by Allah and not by you. So it's not a matter of something you have to tarbiyah yourself so much. Now to go too deep into sleep and miss all your prayers then the result is that before you sleep your fajr, before you sleep the nighttime prayer, drink lots of water, lots of water. And then train yourself to keep making wudu, get up. And then wash, pray your Salatul Wudu on the side of your bed and go straight to bed. And you do this throughout the night so that your sleep is very light. <clears throat> that way you're, you're more attentive and, and ready for your Salah and, and not going in such a deep sleep. Some people sleep like they're in a coma, inshaAllah. <clears throat> Sayyidi, is there any wazifa or recitation that can jumpstart the humility drive? and cut out self-love completely so haqqaiq work becomes more easier and efficient. <laughs> Be careful for what you pray for <laughs> because uh, humility is usually, it's not self-humility where you, you bring somebody a cup of water and, oh how are you and I bring you, is when Allah going to send you through a washing machine of humiliation where people will humiliate you 
people at work will humiliate you, family members will humiliate you and you have to resist fighting and saying and, and saying. So the path of humiliation is very difficult. Try to, to approach that with uh, patience and slow. There is no fast relief to realities. There's not a drive through where we try to double up on everything <coughs> and get everywhere quick. It's a lifelong process. So by doing the zikr, by doing the meditation, by doing the tafakkur, you're building up the tools you need that when somebody insults you, you don't reply. You just smile and understand this is now a test for you. Or you interact with the shaykh and the shaykh will begin to poke at you. So that to say you're wrong on this or wrong on that and you're quick to make a reply and quick to say, I want to do this or that. All of these characteristics they have to be brought down. So path of humility is going to take time, it's not something easy and there's nowhere to reach in a hurry. This is a lifelong process, inshaAllah. Wa rahmati Muhammad al-Mustafa wa basira Surat al-Fatiha. InshaAllah we try to see each other again tomorrow night. And Jawmah Mubarak to everyone and Allah bless you and forgive me inshaAllah bi hurmati Muhammad al-Mustafa wa Surat al-Fatiha. Click the link now to subscribe.